This is certainly one of the most impressive trees. I've come here because it's the perfect place to illustrate how plant evolution began. You are standing in the herbarium of the University of Nottingham. You may not realise it. Ugh. Because the herbarium is not particularly well organised. There we go. This year I'd like to produce a series of films about how to identify plants. Lots of people are interested in plants. Gardening is pretty much the biggest hobby in the UK, apart from killing fish I believe. That seems to be the number one. But there's a perception that identifying plants is difficult. And actually it isn't difficult at all. My favourite flora is this one by Francis Rose. With a copy of A Good Flora, you can teach yourself everything you need to know about plants. There's about 20 plant families in the UK that make up the vast majority of the flora here. And if you learn your plant families, it saves you a huge amount of time because instead of having to flip through lots of stages of a key, you can know straight away the type of plant you're looking at and focus on that part of the key and find exactly what you're looking for. Before we go any further though, there are a few essential tools that you need as a botanist. The first one is a good sharp knife. Under the Dangerous Weapons Act 1978, you're allowed to carry anything provided it's a tool, and that is a tool for dissecting plants. You also need, for certain features, a hand lens. Actually, most of the features of plants that we'll talk about, you'll be able to see perfectly well without a hand lens, provided you have reasonable eyesight, and even eye count is reasonable eyesight. But if you have a hand lens, it's convenient. I say that in the UK you can identify everything with a key. In other parts of the world that's not always the case, and often what you need to do is to compare the plant specimen you have in front of you with a reference collection. In other words, in a herbarium somewhere, maybe in Kew, maybe in Missouri, maybe in one of the other major collections of plants around the world, you will be able to go there and you find the reference specimen, the piece of paper with a pressed plant on it, that is the official definition for that species. The way we collect plants in order to make reference specimens is by the age-old traditional flower pressing method. You can forget your high throughput genetic sequences and uh, supercomputers. This is all you need to do botanical research. This has probably been used by my students, so there could be all sorts of things stuck in it. And you sandwich your plant specimen between blotting paper and newspaper. So we have a couple of pieces of newspaper here. We have something in the middle. Is it a good example? No, it isn't. <laughs> Let's find a good one. Ah, that's better. So you need the blotting paper to gradually dry out your specimen so that it sucks the moisture from them. And what you end up with is a dried sample. There we go. And this is a species I haven't identified yet, but it's from the Orobankaceae, which is a family of parasitic plants that don't have any of their own chlorophyll, but they attach themselves to the roots of other plants and produce these flower stems. They're probably my favourite family of plants. The reason I'm showing you this is just to illustrate what a dried plant looks like when you've collected it. And then you would have to take this back to a herbarium and then you would look through your existing reference specimens and you would find something that matches it in its characteristics. What were these collected in the 1950s? There we go. The fact that this is over 50 years old demonstrates why these resources are so important. Because they are permanent, because they will stay like this at least for centuries. But if you're going to do this sort of thing, if you're going to find your herbarium specimen, first of all you need to know roughly where in the herbarium to look. The Q herbarium is enormous. And unless you know your plant families, you won't know which shelf to, to start at. So what I'm hoping to do is to create a series of films about the main plant families that you find in the British Isles, how you would go about identifying them, and the sorts of plants that you find in them. I'll also give a bit more background about the evolution of plants, where they come from, how all these different plant families fit together, just to give a context for where plants have arisen from and, and their overall diversity.